Already is set. Eric Dickerson, resident of nearby Malibu, California, returns wearing number 29 in the jersey of the Indianapolis Colts. Well, he was out here early today at Anaheim Stadium to meet his fans and his former teammates. There's Eric about an hour ago before the teams really put on the serious pads. Doug Smith, hey, how's your wallet doing there, Doug? I'm a little richer being in Indianapolis. And there's the yardage leader in receiving Henry Ellard. And, of course, Dickerson was the rushing leader enjoying their pregame jokes. And Mel Owens won't be smiling later on. He'll have the assignment of tackling Eric Dickerson. And the fans remember that Dickerson left. And when he was in, introduced just moments ago, starting lineups, they would heavily booed Eric Dickerson. Well, when we were talking to the Rams earlier this week, they recounted stories of Dickerson saying, if I ever, when he was with the Rams, ran against that defense, your defense, I'd get 200 yards. And they kid, well, you'd be lucky to get 60. Well, Bill Walsh, yesterday we talked with Eric Dickerson, and he said, he has a mark for a good game today. Well, 100 won't do it, Dick. 100 yards to him is routine. He wants 150, and of course, a Colts victory. The 60-yard limit for the Rams is a little unrealistic, I think. All right, you had to play your 49ers against the Rams twice each year. You had to stop Eric Dickerson. What did you do? Well, we prayed a little bit, but really, we tried to fill every gap with a lineman as big as we could get them, expect the linebackers to make stops, then the safeties. In our case, Ronnie Lott and Carlton Williamson would come up and finish off the tackles. And of course, Newsom and Stewart are going to have to do that today for the Rams. So the safeties of the Rams should get a lot of tackling calls today if things are going well. How about just uh, technique in terms of tackling Dickerson? Well, I think you have to grab something and hold on to him because, and then expect help to arrive. Well, how about you personally? If you had to play against him, how would you tackle him? <laughs> I'd throw money all over the field. When he bent down to pick it up, I'd jump on his back. <laughs> well, the hidden figure of the big trade of draft choices was Greg Bell. Buffalo just kind of threw him into the deal, and he gains 1,000 yards last year, and he got over 100 last week. That's right. He's a very effective play, a gliding runner, not spectacular. But he has one advantage over Dickerson today because the Colt defense is not as strong against the run as the Ram defense. So you watch for Bell in the second half, the Rams ahead, conceivably he'll have more yards than Dickerson today. Both teams ready for the opening kickoff. As you'll see in the baseball layout, the California Angels make this their baseball home, still in the thick of the American League Western pennant. So when players get down to our right on that infield surface, that could be a factor. Clarence Verdan speediest of the Colts and Albert Bentley are deep to return for Indianapolis. They'll get the ball first and fans will see Dickerson shortly as Mike Lansford, the barefooted Ram kicker, tees it up. Rams victorious in Atlanta in their opening game last Sunday. The Colts played the Super Bowl champion 49ers, lost 30 to 24 at the Hoosier Dome. Some of the Rams assistants coming out to clear the field from the pregame activity. Some of the balloons that burst in the introduction of the starting lineups for the Rams. And there's Dickerson waiting his turn. He's tried to make light of this week that the really there he's got nothing but fans here in Southern California. He really wasn't that upset with management, but uh, all of us know better. He left bitterly. He said some things that were very critical of Rams management. And he said, uh, I don't mean to take him back. Lansford gets it started. It goes to Verdan at the five. Dances outside and gets to the 30-yard line before he's dragged out of bounds by James Washington. The offense for the Indianapolis Colts. And they've got a big line averaging nearly 300 pounds. Hinton, Dixon, Donaldson, Ott, and Paul, the returns from arthroscopic surgery. Chris Chandler, the young quarterback, with Dickerson and Bentley, the backs. Brooks and Verdan, the tight end is Pat Beach. When they go to the pass offense, they bring in four wides, and that's Clarence Weathers, the ex-Brown, and Andre Risen, their number one pick out of Michigan State. Dickerson, the only back behind Chandler, first down just across the 30. Chandler, perhaps changing plays on this, the first of the game. Who else? Dickerson met in the backfield, is charging in. Doug Reed, number 93, nails him for a loss. Defensively, the Rams with Reed, Wright, and Miller when they're in a three-down set. 
Kevin Green, Mel Owens, Fred Strickland, and Mike Wilcher, the linebackers. When they go to their nickel or their eagle defense, they bring in a fifth linebacker, Mark Messner. They go with two down linemen and five linebackers, and those four defensive backs, Gray, Hicks, Stewart, and Newsom. Again, Stewart and Newsom, the safeties, should make a lot of tackles for John Robinson today if they're going to stop Dickerson on second and long. Caught by Bill Brooks at the 34. He gets a couple more to the 36 and pays the price. As those safety men, Stewart and Newsom, come up to collaborate on the hit. Third down for the Colts and a short five. Well, the Colts have started out with three wide receivers trying to spread out the Ram defense. They spoke of it before the game. They're putting it into play. There are all the men in the Christmas tree of presents for John Robinson acquired in the Dickerson deal. All the draft picks plus Greg Bell, and we'll see him shortly as the starting runner for Los Angeles. Rams offside, but may have been drawn offside. As Pat Beach, the tight end, pulled off the line of scrimmage, as Kevin Green, 91, charging after the quarterback. Eric Dickerson, while well, they sort that out, going back to that. Don't start number 87 on the LBS third down. So the offense guilty of the initial move to pull the Rams offside. It'll bring up third down and 10. Going back to all the, now that the trade is complete, the panel that you just saw, all the Ram draft picks, number ones and number twos, and we won't know for a year or two, maybe longer, how successful it's been for Los Angeles. Obviously, the Bills are happy. They got Cornelius Bennett. The Colts are delighted. They have Dickerson. The Rams may or may not be the happiest of all. Chandler, with green pressuring, gets it off to Dickerson. Breaking tackles, and he has a first down out at the 42-43 yard line. And it took half the Rams' defense to get him on the ground. Well, we had a chance to look at Dickerson in a new element, a new dimension. They're going to be throwing him the ball this year. They want to run four wide receivers, isolate him out of the backfield. Now he waits, waits, and comes out late. We're getting a zone defense. Nice throw, catches the ball. Now watch him make the people miss. Right, left, head up, legs going, driving. Now the Rams are following up. Now, the Rams are determined to get a lot of people on the tackle because they know he'll make one guy miss. Dickerson, who complained he didn't get the ball enough in the passing game here in Los Angeles. Again, three wide receivers. Dickerson up the middle. He slams out to the 47-yard line, again of about four. Doug Reed again in on the tackle. Well, we're going to get three wide receivers, and they're going to try to spread out this defense by making the Rams open up their defense and, and consequently the middle of the defense will have fewer people to gang tackle Dickerson and it's a new concept one you'll see all year by the Colts and a good idea a good game plan it'll be interesting to see if they stay with it during the game because they do lose one block in other words the tighter they come offensively in their set the more that plays into a defense like the Rams that's right of course Dickerson loses some blocking when they do it that extra wide receiver is actually a blocker than another back with him. Second and seven. Dickerson, and the ball hits Strickland. Fred Strickland, one of those draft picks used by the Rams in the Dickerson trade out of Purdue University. Hit him in the back, and Dickerson had a step on him. Well, in that case, it was Chris Chandler, the young quarterback's fault. He threw to a covered receiver. He wanted desperately to get the ball uh, to Eric, and uh, he just threw it regardless of the coverage, and it could have been an interception. With all the publicity drawn to Eric Dickerson, many forget what a talented player the Colts have in Albert Bentley. He's in the game now. Bentley and Dickerson. Bentley up on a wing on the left. Bentley's a great blocker. A super blocker. A great blocker. And that's going to make the difference. When they take him out, they lose something with those three wide receivers. Good pass protection. And the throw is for Verdan, incomplete at the 25 to 35 yard line, and the Rams defense is held. Well, it's an interesting new concept in a sense in the use of Dickerson. In the past, he's had all the block he could keep blocking he could get with a tight end, a big back in front of him to block. Now the idea of spreading the defense for three or four wide receivers and then him splitting people running up inside. 
Good concept. Now, again, they have to be able to throw the ball to make that kind of thing work. Ron Stark, who has been the top punter in the NFL three of the last six years, and Daryl Henley, he too, a selection by the Rams in the Dickerson trade, stands back at the 13. Beautiful spiral kick. Henley will let it go. And it kicks into the end zone for the touchback. The Rams will have it for the first time at their own 20-yard line. Early at Anaheim Stadium, the Colts and Rams no score. A lot of pro bowlers in that offensive line for the Rams. Panky, Newberry, Doug Smith. Then the, the pro bowl five straight years, Slayton and Slater, the veteran tackle. And they'll be blocking for Greg Bell, number 42. There's the offensive line for the Rams in front of Bell. Jim Everett, the quarterback. Buford McGee, the blocking back for Bell. Ellard and Anderson, the wide receiver. Devone Johnson is the tight end. When they go to their passing package, Pete Holohan comes in as the H-back. Caught 59 balls last year. Everett, the young quarterback from Purdue, on first down from the 20. The quickie to Holohan, and a first down at... Nope, just shy of the first down at the 29. Cliff Odom made the tackle for the Colts. And here are the men on defense in the blue and white from Indianapolis. Danell Thompson, Harvey Armstrong, John Hand. Three down linemen with the linebackers Alston, Odom, Young, and Bickett. When they go to their nickel, those three men go out. They bring in an extra down man, Ezra Johnson, the veteran pass rusher with Baylor and Taylor, joining these four defensive backs to make it a six-back package. Good Daniel Ball and Pryor. Ball and Pryor. Two tough defensive uh, safeties. Everett has a man open. Eller, but can't hit him on the sidelines. That's that pass package of Ernie Zampezi, the former San Diego Charger offensive aide. He has that quarterback throwing the ball before the cut is made. He's throwing to a spot. Well, Ernie developed Dan Fouts in particular, and that style of football, time passes, the ball's thrown just as the receiver breaks, well-timed, and they can get away with, with Everett because he's got such a strong arm. They'll throw a lot of out patterns. He's one of, the, one of the few quarterbacks in the game today that can throw the out pattern accurately, even off his back foot, so to speak. Third down and one. It's Bell. And he's out to the 39-yard line and a first down. A gain of 10 on his first carry for Greg Bell. He had 128 yards last week at Atlanta. Well, this is the disadvantage that Dickerson has when he's playing against the Ram defense. This is the Colt defense. And Bell starts laterally, then cuts back. That great offensive line of the Rams just push those Colt defenders right along the line of scrimmage. Again, it could be that Bell will outgain Dickerson today, basically with the quality of defense the Colts have. Ellard sent wide to the right, but Holohan tight on the left side and in motion. The toss to Bell, caught in the backfield, breaks a tackle, and makes a couple of yards out of it. O'Brien Alston was the man who made the hit. Let's check the scores, early games, and some finals in. Still going Cleveland, leading the Jets. The Raiders have lost at Kansas City 24-19, and Washington way ahead early, 20 to nothing. Now leads by only two against Philadelphia. Cincinnati apparently is going to go one and one. Pittsburgh off to a terrible start, and Atlanta has defeated Dallas. Miami a winner at New England and Green Bay edges New Orleans 35-34. Late games, Houston has a field goal early at San Diego and Phoenix leads early at Seattle. The Giants have a field goal against Detroit. There no score, second down and eight. It's Bell again. Couldn't get outside as O'Brien Alston, a second year linebacker from the University of Maryland there to wrap him up. Well, Bell that time should have broke underneath everything. I'm sure when he comes off the field, the change of possession, the coaches are going to tell him. That time, cutting back again, he'd have gotten five or six yards. So he's getting a feel for this game. The Colts are excellent on the edges. That means that Bickett and Alston outside, two big active line linebackers. But inside, last week against the 49ers, they were shoved all over the place. This week it could happen again. This Ram line with his experience and his size, probably going to have a, a good day today. Third down and eight as the Rams go to the extra wide receiver. Blitz. Everett throws it complete. Out of bounds, Flipper Anderson with a first down at the Colt 46. 
Boy, that was a good throw, and he was throwing off his back foot, falling away from the pressure. Well, he knew just what was going to happen with his receiver. We were going to get a hooking pattern, but we had blitzes up inside, and uh, Everett just held that ball, counted on his receiver, pushing up the field. The ball's in the air. Now we stop, come back for it. Of course, you've got a great guy catching the ball, a great young prospect in Anderson. They really think Anderson can go, go places because of his great agility. He can make those kind of catches changing direction, leaping for a ball. Plus, that has got excellent speed. On first down, Everett goes for Ellard. And he has a first down at the 21. No one touched him. He still can run, and he's all the way to the 18-yard line. Again, Everett threw that ball before Ellard turned his head. Now, that's beautiful timing. If the Rams can continue this all year, they're going to have a great season. Look at the bottom of your screen. Watch Ellard straight up the field. Of course, one of the great receivers in the game. Now, they're trying to hit him at the line. I think they lost the safety rotation. There should be a safety back there somewhere. Excellent catch. Well-timed ball. Uh, Everett's made uh, gigantic steps in becoming one of the premier quarterbacks. Chris Good just vaulted right over Ellard when he was down, so Ellard wisely got up and picked up a few more yards. A 28-yard play. rung up after a one-yard game by Dwayne Beckett, the number one pick of the Colts four years ago from Southern California. Beckett's parents are here from Australia, where his dad is involved in the cotton industry down under. They come once a year back to visit the States and to see their son play. They're in the audience today. It's a big commute to Australia to <laughs> an American football game. Beckett, a very bright guy, was an academic All-America at USC. A minus student in accounting. Had just a fair game last week against the 49ers. In fact, the 49ers really took him apart. He's determined this week to make something happen. Everett, plenty of time. Incomplete to Ellard, and he was well blanketed at that time. Chris Good on the coverage. Bickett was recruited out of Glendale, California as a tight end by John Robinson, the Rams coach, when Robinson was the head man at Southern California. And uh, after about one year, he decided he wouldn't be a tight end, Bickett. Well, John decided Bickett was playing third or fourth team tight end as a sophomore, not much chance to play. John looked at him, watched him, watch his intensity, decided to put him at linebacker. Bickett didn't argue. John said, you'll be an All-American and finally play pro football. And John's, uh, John's concept was right. Another blitz. Tripping and falling is the quarterback. On third down and nine, Everett going back. Let's see what happened. Hit one of his uh, linemen's legs. Mm -hmm. Comes out of there. It looks, it looks like he caught a linesman's leg. Now, they've really worked on Everett's feet because he's a big, angular man. Van Pizzi worked with Fouts, the same kind of athlete. To quicken those Four feet, to get him up underneath you and get balanced to throw a ball quickly. And they, they have helped with that. Uh, that time, I think he tripped over over one of his own blockers. 40-yard field goal attempt by Mike Lansford out of Hola Hands Hold, and he hits it right down State College Boulevard. 40 yards for Lansford, and the Rams take the early lead, 3-0 here in Anaheim. Yeah. Yeah. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Niccolo. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Niccolo. By today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. And by Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. Now the Rams using a Craig Bell run, but primarily the arm of Jim Everett. Drive downfield and settle for a 40-yard field goal by Lansford. It's 3-0, and Lansford to kick it off with Bentley and Verdan at the other end for the Colts. It comes short to Verdan at the 12. And he slides down, gets back up. He made a nice little slide out there around the shortstop position. Fumbled the ball, but he was down, says the referee. It'll be first down, Colts at about their 31-yard line. That was a rather appropriate slide by Verdan. Pretty good high school baseball well, it player. It was his second base, wasn't it? Right on the <laughs> infield. He'll be talking about that. His nickname is CNN. Nice little hook slide up on his feet. Everybody was fooled. He's really determined. I'm afraid he's going to get hit a little bit with that size and that traffic. 
but he is determined. He's an excellent competitor. CNN, because Verdan talks 24 hours a day. Chris Chandler at quarterback did not have a good week against the 49ers. He talked about that yesterday. Throws on first down, and a fine catch made. Clarence Weathers, a plan B free agent from the Cleveland Browns, leaping high for a 19-yard gain. Jerry Gray and Anthony Newman on the coverage for the Rams. That was a tight throw against his own defense. Weathers is going to the corner. Good pass protection. Look how close this is. Oh, right up over the top. Now, uh, Chris throws the ball well, but I'm not sure he'll be able to get away with that one again. Great catch. Nice, nice pass. He's got a fine future. He was shocked when he was sent in a year ago and became the starting quarterback uh, from really out of the blue, but he's developing. Here's that four wide receiver set, three to the left. Chandler on first down. Guns it complete underneath. Andre Risen finally out of bounds at the Ram 38-yard line. Another Colts first down. Andre Risen from Michigan State. Andre was uh, naturally a great player at Michigan State. He, he came into the league uh, uh, a little late in the draft, but he just simply breaks out and uh, catches a ball. Uh, they're playing the four wide receivers, forcing the Rams to spread out, and the Rams really haven't done it yet. They're playing their base defense against four wide receivers, so that means Chandler and the coaching staff are going to probably throw this ball. There's every reason to throw it. There just aren't adequate people to cover four wide receivers. Now Dickerson tries the center of the Ram defense, gets to the 35, where Alvin Wright, the nose tackle from Jacksonville State of Alabama, number 99, makes the stop. Well, that, that shows you, Dick, the uh, respect they have for Dickerson. Cleveland and the Jets, that game with the Browns apparently on to their second victory in the fourth quarter. Final Cincinnati a winner, so is Atlanta. Miami. At New England, victorious, as is Green Bay. Late games, the Bears have scored against Minnesota. Houston, 3 0 at San Diego. And I can't read quite that fast. I hope you can. Lots to get in. Well, the Rams are staying. We had last time, last play, we're in a base defense against four wide receivers. That means we're just in there to stop Dickerson. Rams put pressure on. Dickerson has a big hole. And a first down at the 21 yard line. Well, again. Uh, Dickerson wants one-on-one. -on -one. The Rams blitzed him that time. Consequently, no people to pursue. Dickerson will break up the field, but the Rams are going to be blitzing up the field. No one to make the stop once he breaks that line of scrimmage. You can see the big hole breaking right through here up the field. That was that hole existed because the Rams were willing to blitz on that down. They know it's a, a real gamble, especially with a guy like Dickerson. 13 yards for Dickerson. The Colts stay with their four wide receivers. Three to the right this time. Chandler has a man open. Complete to Risen. And Andre Previn Risen is out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Michael Stewart made the tackle, and a flag is down. Thus far, excellent game plan by the Indianapolis Colts. Excellent. Mixing the pass and the run. Dickerson stopped occasionally, but he finally gets his break. But these receivers are impressive. All four of them. They're quick. Face mask on the defense. Five yards. Still first down. Red Cash in today's referee. Michael Stewart, 23, riding him down and using the face mask. That takes with the penalty. The ball inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Dickerson can sense that goal line at this point. Trailing 3-0. The Colts. Look at first down and about two and a half. Again, four wide receivers, base defense, not enough defenders to stop the pass. They're all in there to stop Dickerson. Look how well spread that defense is. Dickerson looking for a hole. Doesn't get much to the 10-yard line, but that'll be enough for a first down. Alvin Wright and others make the tackle. John Robinson, the winningest Ram coach in history, and this is only his sixth season in Los Angeles. That's a rather startling fact with all the outstanding men who have coached the Rams through the years. He's two better than Chuck Knox and ten more than George Allen won while he was the head man here. Again, four wide receivers. Trap. Dickerson. Caught from the backside by Mel Owens, 58, with 
Vince Newsom coming up from the safety to help out. Well, they're picked up on the Cincinnati approach. They're going without a huddle. Uh, they're forcing the Rams to keep that three-man line in the game. The Rams are really having trouble substituting, and uh, they may have to call a timeout. No, they got it done. But they're still in the three-man line. Four wide receivers. Dickerson should still have room to run up inside. Second down. Chandler looks. Throws incomplete to Brooks. Ball skipping in at the goal line with Michael Stewart on the coverage. Again, Chris forced that ball in there. You're this close to the goal line. Don't throw a real tight, close pass in there, especially when you have at least one more down to go for the touchdown. So he's he's showing his inexperience, but he does have the great arm. And the Colts themselves have commented they like Chandler's mobility, and there was a play where I think he expected more pressure than he got and may have hurried his throw when he did have time to maybe move around a little bit. Well, Chris Hinton, the great tackle, playing left tackle today, really likes Chandler. Of course, he says he saves him some because of his running ability. Third and goal from the seven, and Chandler calls time. Ron Meyer and his staff will huddle with a quarterback to come up with uh, what they hope will be a touchdown piece of magic. Time out here in Anaheim late in the first quarter. Just under three minutes remaining in the first quarter here in Anaheim. Dick Enberg with Bill Walsh. The Indianapolis Colts are inside the Ram 10-yard line. A big third down and seven. After the timeout, Chandler sends Ferdinand to the right. Brooks to the left. Dickerson and Bentley in the backfield. Now this is a running formation. Chandler to throw. Going to run it. And doesn't make it. Stopped to the two-yard line by Doug Reed, number 93, and Fred Strickland, 53. An excellent call. Uh, they put the two backs in with a tight end. Uh, they fake the run to Dickerson, coming to this side of the field. Chandler faking, coming back outside. This tight end crossing the field. But the Rams backed into a zone defense. Nowhere to throw the ball. You see Chandler coming outside. The Rams drop beautifully. Now Chandler makes the right decision. Good decision. Good defense. You've got to go for a field goal. Ball at the two-yard line on fourth and goal. Dean Biasucci to try out of the hold of Ron Stark. A short field goal of 19 yards. And the game is tied. Biasucci with uh, not much more than an extra point. So John Robinson plays with the Rams defense. Deny the touchdown. We're tied at three. Eric Dickerson, as you saw earlier on NFL Live, is green today is to run 180 yards or more down the sidelines, down the Rams sidelines, if you will, to win the game. Instrumental in that drive, but it falls short of a touchdown. The Colts settle for the short field goal. It's three all as Biasucci kicks it. Delvino and the speedster Ron Brown, and it's Ron Brown, the former Olympian. Gets out to the 21, maybe the 22-yard line. Let's check the scoreboard on our 10-minute ticker. The finals in in the early games, and the Browns have beaten the Jets. Boy, Philadelphia, what a comeback from 20 to nothing. The Redskins have lost two tough ones at home. Chicago early with a lead. San Diego leads Houston early down south. Tampa Bay 3-0 against San Francisco early in the second. The Giants 3-0 against Detroit and Phoenix. An early field goal lead at Seattle. A lot of scoring, Dick. A lot of scoring. What happened to defense around the league? Yeah, really game scored from the 30s and 40s. Here it's 3-all. Final minutes of the first period. And the long pass complete to Anderson all the way to the 40-yard line. Chris Good made the tackle. And Everett unloads the bomb. And Flip Anderson, Flipper Anderson from UCLA is there. Look at Anderson straight up the field. Again, Everett throwing that ball beautifully. Look at this throw. It's up in the air before Anderson even looks. Right on the money. Anderson is a super young athlete. And what a different dimension to this Ram team, Dick, compared to Ram teams in the past. The pass has been run, run, occasional pass, changing quarterbacks every other year. Now with Everett timing it, Van Pisi coaching him, his fine receivers, just a different kind of team. This kind of team can win a championship. Everett, who led the NFL in touchdown passes last year, got 38 on that throw and whips this one out to Greg Bell. Bell with a good move. Almost humbled the 
ball but hangs on at the 33 of Indianapolis a gain of about seven Fred Young who specializes in forcing fumbles the linebacker along with Alston make the stop now this is strictly an outlet pass look at the poise that Everett's developed he looks over he knows Bell's going to be there nice clean pass when I say clean pass those are among the toughest passes to throw because they have to be spontaneous and they have to be right out in front of the numbers to catch all right, Bell was fortunate to hang on to the ball after being stripped from it. Gain of eight yards. He's just going to throw the ball. Everett has plenty of room to roam. Heads to the sidelines and gets it out of bounds at the 28. The tackle made by Michael Ball. The safety is a first down Los Angeles. Everett has made the breakthrough. He's made the breakthrough. He's now in that premier category. Before the game, John Robinson was talking about Everett being on level two as a quarterback, whereas the Montanas, people of that, that level, the Elways are the level one. But as I see this, I see he's coming along so far, so quickly, and he could be right in that same category with an Elway. Everett, who was the number one pick of the Oilers, but wouldn't sign with Houston back in 86. And now with the coaching of Robinson and Sam Easy into perhaps one of the NFL stars at that position. Down the middle has a man wide open. Henry Eller, touchdown. Well, you got the full blitz up inside. Everybody coming. Eller to the post. Everett holding the ball. Then just locking it up over the defender. Touchdown. Henry Eller, who caught 10 touchdown passes last year, hooks up with Everett on this one. And that one uh, looked easy. The entire drive for the Rams. Well, Everett handled the blitz. Lansford to try the point after. Holahan, the tight end, holds. to three. Well, the Colts are going to have to be careful with their blitz. Everett is taking it apart. Now, you'll just see simply a post pattern. No big deal, but the blitz is coming up inside. Everett shows his poise in holding the ball. Now, here they come up inside. They're well pass protected. Now, he just lofts it up over the top. Now, that was against Chris Good, I think, number 37. And to be honest with you, the Rams were practicing this kind of play against Chris. Chris came in last week and played fairly well. Uh, ba Baylor had his problems. But you'll see right up in front of Chris, just this is a great receiver, naturally. He's got good turn, then he breaks across the face. Now, really has to concentrate to catch the ball. Now, good speed, or lack of it, hurt him there. He couldn't recover quickly enough. So Eller, the pro bowler last year, out of Fresno State. And uh, he, like Everett, not getting their due pub, uh, in terms of publicity last year. Everett, with 31 touchdown passes, led the NFL. And Henry Eller gained more yards receiving than any pass catcher, including Jerry Rice and the other stars. He had over 1,400 yards receiving. Well, a lot of it came later in the year, and people weren't paying much attention to it. Now the Rams take the lead 10 to 3 with just 10 seconds left in this first quarter. And Lansford to kick it off. Bentley and Verdan are deep for the Colts. Again, it goes to Verdan. Trying to get outside with all that speed, but he's corralled shy of the 20-yard line. And with it, the end of the first period here in sunny Anaheim, California, where the Los Angeles Rams on an impressive touchdown drive, capped by Everett to Ellard, have the lead 10-3. His first Pro Bowl was uh, January 84, and his coach was a guy named Bill Walsh. <laughs> That's right. It was my first experience with it. And we had a playbook about 20 pages deep. Yeah, he said, I thought I'd be run right, run left, and a couple of passes. He said, I checked it, and you gave him a playbook that thick. Yeah, we gave him a big, big, thick playbook. He said, I didn't enjoy the week, but I certainly enjoyed the game because we won, I think, by 40 points. 
He said they, they had the fun after the game. So you were that meticulous even in a Pro Bowl? Well, we just wanted to win it, and we wanted to have fun doing it. And of course, coaches have fun with playbooks. Players have fun <laughs> around town. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie Slater and the Rams having fun on that last touchdown drive. And now the Colts trailing 10 to 3 open the second quarter at their own 18 yard line. Dickerson, the only setback. Two tight ends this time and three wide receivers. Candler to throw. He goes deep. He's got a man, Verdan. He's got it. It's going to be a long cold touchdown. 82 yards. Chandler to Everett. To Clarence Verdan. Well, Jerry Gray was just flat out beaten. Now, he's a Pro Bowl football player. And about at about 35 yards, Verdan's speed showed up, and he just accelerated past Gray. That's a good young throw in a sense because it's just a live arm putting that ball down the field. Now, I've got to feel that uh, the Colts have that in mind during the week preparing for this game. Verdan, who with that speed got the big gainer last year for the Colts when he averaged nearly 22 yards a catch with his 20 receptions and four touchdowns. That's his first score of 1989. The big bomb of 82 yards now to tie it. Here's Viasucci. Rams offside. Red Cashin will come in sort this up. Offside against Los Angeles uh, matters very little, and we'll take a look at uh, just how Chandler. Encroachment by the defense. Be a five-yard penalty on the kickoff. Believe it or not, that's a telling penalty. It really is because you can get the ball in the end zone with your kickoff can't get reckless right at this point on the field. And now Biasucci goes for 10-10. One of the Rams were in there with a hand up, but able to lock it up over 10-10. There's Verdan, the touchdown maker, and here's how it happened. The interesting concept here from the standpoint, good pass protection. He just threw the ball. You see all that clearance for Verdan. He's just totally outrunning Gray. Totally outrunning. I guess Gray must have just uh, either misunderstood or didn't interpret Verdan's speed very well. Now you see him coming off the line, and Gray's in good position all the way up the field. Excellent position, good back pedal. Now as he turns, he doesn't have the acceleration for Dan. If you get that ball thrown in that in that uh, that accurately down the field, and we lost our free safety uh, somewhere in there, we lost our free safety Stewart, who couldn't get over there quickly enough. And maybe that's what the Colts are doing with their four wide receiver scheme or three wide receivers and the concentration on Dickerson that isolates some of these speedy receivers on a single defensive back and Gray, a pro bowler the last three years, just beaten by a perfect throw. Perfect throw, super speed, great speed, free safety not getting there. In a defense that didn't allow any double coverage, primarily because Dickerson's in that backfield and they have to have people in there to make the stop. So John Robinson sees that 10-3 lead evaporate on one big play. It's tied at 10. That's the play taking exactly 10 seconds of the second period. Biasucci to kick it off. Brown and Del Pino deep. Brown on the near side for Los Angeles. Well, both clubs are gifted with quick receivers, fast receivers. Sort of a new era in the NFL. They're not looking for size and receivers necessarily. It's that explosion, quickness, and of course speed. It's toward Ron Brown. He has four NFL touchdowns on kickoff returns. And the former gold medalist isn't able to get any farther than the 15-yard line as Stan Eisenhuth and others are there for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, Ron Brown's looking to go all the way on every kickoff return. He hasn't quite developed into the player that people think he should be. Uh, consistency of catching the ball, concentration, tremendous Olympic game speed. Sort of now just utilizes the kickoff return man. Greg Bell, number 42. They offered him number 29 when he came to Los Angeles. Eric Dickerson's old number. He said, no, thank you. I don't but I won't it, take more money. I don't think it would have fit very well either. Bell's not quite built like Eric. Bell hit in the backfield. 
and unable to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard. Good defensive play by Donnell Thompson, number 99. We talked with him the other day, and of course, money came up. Greg Bell was a holdout, didn't join the Rams until very late in the summer training period. And we asked him, uh, well, are you happy now that you signed a new deal? Well, he said, of course not. You're not happy in the NFL signing deal. You always want a little bit more. It's sort of the way to be. You're not quite satisfied with your salary, but he did it with a smile on his face, naturally. He's excited, he's appreciative of this opportunity, and has paid off for the Rams almost by default. You know how they got it. It's just a on the trade. Everett throws underneath the hole hand, and he's met immediately by Fred Young, the linebacker. And they say forward progress at the 17, 18 yard line, no fumble. Fred Young from New Mexico State, part of a, a series of major trades that involved the Colts in the last uh, few years. Fred uh, saying that he still is trying to adjust to that responsibility inside, even though he feels more comfortable there than on an outside position. Well, he had a very, very poor day last week against the 49ers. He knocked him every every direction, sideways, upside down. He's determined to do something about it, but he's new in that position. I'm not sure it was a great trip. He had two first-round trips, uh, trips, picks for Young. Uh, that's a little excessive. And they're trying to get that mileage out of him now. He's determined to play well, but but not a great trade. Dickerson trade, great. Young trade, not at all great. Rams uh, asked for a timeout with 13-12 remaining in the first half, and the Colts and Rams even at 10. Uh, yeah. Return third down and eight. Young not in the game now. Fred with a couple of Ds, one for defense and one for deal. He got a lot of money in Indianapolis. He said, actually, Seattle... Someone gave him two Ds in credit. It's a stage thing. It has nothing to do with my real name, but what the heck. Everett goes long. And just off Aaron Cox at the 50-yard line as Eugene Daniel was there to cover for the Colts. I swear that Fred Young looks like Chubby Checker or that rock and roll star. I swear he does. Maybe I'm dating myself. Look at this replay. Again, the Rams are just going to take their shots down the field. They've got the speed now. Are they getting man-to-man -man coverage? Daniel with a defensive play, and here's the punt by Dale Hatcher, who is averaging 41.6 uh, last week at Atlanta. And Clarence for Dan, who had the 82-yard touchdown reception, is at the other end. The kick is short. And down on the Rams' half of the 50-yard line at the 49. Well, next week here on NBC, we have an NFL doubleheader for you, beginning at 12.30 with NFL Live. Some of you will see Buffalo and Houston, early game, or Seattle and New England. And the second half of the doubleheader will be up at Mile High Stadium, Bill and I, to see the Raiders and the Broncos. Some of you will catch the Chiefs winners today against the Raiders against the Chargers and Jim McCann. That's next Sunday, an NBC doubleheader. NFL action. And four wide receivers. Three to the left, and Jacobson the only running back. He's in the pass pattern. A throw to the other side, however. And it goes to Clarence Weathers for about four yards to the Ram 46-yard line. Chris Chandler, the quarterback, the youngest man on this cold team at 23, a starter last year at 22, but uh, Ron Meyer feels that his team can be led by youth, and he sees something special, special in this young man. Well, he's got Eric Dickerson to run, a big, powerful offensive line to run, good pass protection. Chandler's got that arm, that quick arm, and he's got that uh, an enthusiasm he brings to the team. Just almost naive enthusiasm. Well, and there's a real stability about him. Maybe that comes from the fact he was the ninth out of ten children of Everett Washington Chandler. Nice easy throw and a first down at the Ram 30-yard line as he guns a bullet to Bill Brooks. Again, Rams in a three-man line. Now they're going to their nickel package. A three-man line with just the, uh, three pass rushers, a zone defense. We're going to get up the field, breaking people in the zone, not quite getting back, a lot of pass protection. So they might as well just take advantage of it. Now Chandler's really showing me something. Vicky's got a great arm, a great arm. That one through the zone to Brooks, his leading receiver of last year, and again after one week this year. First down inside the Ram 30. 10-10 the score. Dickerson has a little hole, but it fills in a hurry as Bill Hawkins, the number one pick of the Rams. He's another 
a product of the Dickerson trade. Hawkins, the pick from Miami of Florida, he was one of the number ones. Running back for the Hurricanes, Cleveland, Gary the other. Gary, who signed late, won't join the club. He's with the club now, but won't play until next week. Well, Hawkins, uh, according to John Robinson, reminds him a lot of Merlin Olsen, of course, the great, great football player from, of many years ago. A uh, good friend of yours, by the way, obviously. But Hawkins has that size, that body build, and that strength. And he talks about his intelligence as well. He likes that. He's a quick learner. Second down and six. Quick throw is intercepted. Almost intercepted. Verdan, the intended receiver, and Clifford Hicks who's playing in that corner because Leroy Urban, the Pro Bowl cornerback who is uh, sidelined on a, an NFL penalty of four weeks for substance abuse, is not available. They're trying to time just the basic what we call square out. The ball's in the air now. It's just thrown a little high. And, of course, we're right in position to make an interception. Hicks doesn't spot the ball quite quickly enough, or he's got it himself. Now the Colts look at third down and six. Dickerson joined by Bentley in the backfield. So Strickland, the linebacker, back off of that nose position into now what is a three down set defensively. Chandler underneath to Dickerson, and he's corralled at the 17 yard line, but that'll be a first down for the Colts. Wiltshire and Strickland got him. Dickerson is uh, performing. The one point about Dickerson running the ball, Dick, the entire offensive line of the Colts, uh, in a sense, are, are, are trouble because they all know they have to sustain their block throughout a running play because he can break anywhere. Uh, Chris Hinton was talking to us about it. He said he has to sustain that block. Dickerson starts right, and I'll be darned. He bends right back over Hinton's block. And on the back side, whenever Dickerson goes right, Hinton says, I've got to maintain my block because Dickerson might be coming my way. Given play. Dickerson tries the left side and slashes down to the 10 yard line. Well, you the mark of the great back, when you think they've got three or four, they're getting seven or eight. And just pushing people back, driving people off the line. Then, as you see, Dickerson break through. When he feels it, he'll go down underneath people. He'll get an extra six or eight feet or a couple of yards doing that. Dickerson says a good game is 150 yards. That's a career for a lot of runners. He has 34 yards thus far today on eight carries. Second down, three. Almost the same play. He waits for the hole to open, and he's close to a first down at the Rams' seven-yard line. Mel Owens, number 58, in on the tackle, along with Vince Newsom. Well, Chris Hinton is the focal point of this running game right here. Look at left tackle driving off the line of scrimmage. Look at that power. Look at that part. I mean, that's the ultimate block all the way through. It's still going. And Dickerson just waited for Hinton's block. Waited on it. When Hinton, Hinton moved his man, then he made his move. And he'll measure for a first down, and that was evidence of why Hinton has made the Pro Bowl five straight years. Star at Northwestern, he too, as they mark first down for the Colts, he too was part of a very big trade, the one that involved John Elway. When the Baltimore Colts couldn't sign Elway and traded him to Denver, Hinton went to the Colts as part of that deal. Well, Hinton is comparable to Elway at his own position. Naturally, he's not going to make as many things happen as a tackle, but he's as great a tackle as Elway was a quarterback. He's keeping his eye on the scoreboard. He's a Cubs fan. He wants the Cubs to win again. He grew up in Chicago and then went to Northwestern University. First and goal, seven yard line. Colts and Rams tied at 10, midway through the second quarter. And that could be a lateral. Let's see how they mark it. Intended for Dickerson and John Robinson coming down the field asking just that. That should be a loss if it's a lateral out of bounds, but it was not marked as such. Very close. Again, Chris Chandler went to uh, his receiver a little early. He had Dickerson outside, and he took his drop. He took his eye off the upfield receivers a little too quickly. You see him looking down the field, not there. Now he comes over here, and he doesn't really get a feel for what's happening over there. That can be picked off. It very well could have been a lateral. He almost got himself in trouble. It was a forward pass. You can see about one yard forward. It's a quarterback. Chandler threw it from the 10 or the 15, and it landed on the 14. Burrowing down to the two-yard line. Picks up five, and Mel Owens and others. 
Stewart in on the tackle. Third and goal at the two for Ron Myers Colts. You can almost say Hinton with the ball. He is, if he had the ball, he'd make yardage. Well, you saw the play previous on the replay, how he cut down Mike Wilcher, the linebacker, and then on the other two plays of this series, opening a big hole on that side of this line. Again, take a look at 75, middle of your screen. Look at that tremendous power in the Driving, driving, you just see his, he's just shoving people all over the field. Third and goal. Jordan Dickerson, you bet. Behind him, touchdown. Jordan Dickerson is the end zone for a touchdown. Dickerson should have given it to Hinton to spike because he rode the blocks of Hinton in that sequence to the score, and Indianapolis leads 16 to 10. Now he's against Peel, and he's got control, and now he just drives him off the line of scrimmage. Now again, you've got a great back right at the goal line. Myers is pleased. No question about that. Dickerson against the 49ers last week did not score a touchdown rushing, had his 106 yards. His first uh, touchdown of 1989, and Biasucci adds the extra point. And with just under eight minutes remaining in the first half here in Anaheim, the Indianapolis Colts have taken the lead, 17 to 10. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By First Brands Corporation, makers of Prestone Advanced Formula Antifreeze. And by Anheuser-Busch, we brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, know when to say when. Are the Colts with back-to-back -back touchdowns. 82-yard pass from Chandler to Verdan, and then an impressive drive with Hinton and Dickerson combining in the ground attack. Dickerson with a score and a 17-10 lead. 7.52 remaining in the first half as Biasucci kicks it off. Ron Brown at the five. And a flag down as Brown is tackled at the 24-yard line while they sort out the penalty. A reminder to our viewers that we will be selecting our Budweiser most valuable player in today's game. We'll announce that at the conclusion of today's contest. You notice they're keeping Ron Brown right over in the corner on those kickoff returns. They don't want him to have any room. That's the clipping signal, and that's the major 15-yard penalty for the Rams, half the distance to the goal line. That'll take it back near the 12-yard line. Clipping during a run back, number 92 of the receivers, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Linebacker Richard Brown with a penalty and they mark it off from the spot of the foul half the distance so that takes it just inside the 10. Eric Dickerson checking on things in Malibu at his home <laughs> on his three cars and his hundred pairs of shoes making sure everything is in order. I'm sure he's very very pleased down right now he's looking for that 150. Got 44 yards so far. Greg Bell for the Rams. Bounced at the 11th. Greg really didn't get it done there. He started into the hole and stopped. Check the other scores, the late scores for you. Minnesota and Chicago now tied in the second period at Soldier Field. San Diego leads at home against Houston, and the Niners and Tampa Bay tied at three. Detroit has a 7-3 lead against the Giants, and Phoenix in front of Seattle up in the state of Washington by a 13-7 score. Here at 17-10, Indianapolis. Second and nine, Bell has a hole, and Bickett brings him down out of the 19-yard line. That'll be short of a first down by about a yard and a half. Well, it's homecoming for Bickett out of Glendale. As you were saying earlier, what a, what a sharp guy, what a bright guy. The Colt defense is playing fairly well now, but they're, they're not that fundamentally sound at this point. They have a new coaching staff, New assistance for Ron Meyer. They'll get better as the year goes on. I felt that the Rams would move the ball a little better than they're doing. Third, third down, a yard and a half. Ah! Triple left. Cox in motion. Everett with a man wide open. Holohan. 
He has the first down at the 24-yard line. Oh, how they love Olahan in third down passing situations. 59 catches last year. What did John Robinson say about him? He thinks he'll play till he's 60. <laughs> and if, Ron, if John can coach till he's 60, that's a great combination. But what he has are, are good hands in traffic. In other words, as he catches the ball, he can take a big hit from a linebacker or someone and hold on to the ball. He uh, was recruited by Notre Dame as a quarterback, but they had another guy at Notre Dame at the time named Joe Montana. So he became a tight end. First down, Everett, plenty of time, dumps it off to Bell. And Bell met rudely at the 27-yard line after about a four-yard gain. The Bell is not Dickerson. That time, Bell stopped and tried to make people miss. At that point on the field, you look for two defenders, run directly between them, lower your shoulder, and split people. But don't stop and start with all those people, all those defenders pursuing down the line to get to you. Bell comes out holding uh, his left arm limply doesn't appear to be serious and Robert Del Pino number 39 goes in for the Rams Del Pino is an excellent blocker he's been a big difference good first half forever the 140 yards already passing Del Pino to the 29 yard line that'll leave the Rams almost five yards shy of a first down Fred Young and Harvey Armstrong collaborated on the stop Del Pino, a fifth round pick out of Missouri last year. At this point, uh, you can see Bickett meeting Holohan right here. Good position. They did good pursuit by Young. Just good team defense. Third down and five for the Rams with just under five minutes remaining in the opening half. Stay with us, NFL Live. All the scores, big plays of the second week of the NFL season at halftime. And Everett spends another timeout had the wrong call for the defensive set that he saw and so he'll come over to the sideline oh well, you hate to you hate to see him miss, call a timeout but it's a critical third down so robinson loses one of those precious timeouts with 447 to go first half well while they do know where the cameras are here in southern california this isn't the kind of crowd support you get in denver or washington dc well, they love their team, but they also just love to relax in the sun. Greg <laughs> goes Everett on third and five. Underneath the hole of hand, and they go to him again, and they get another first down. He caught five passes last week against Atlanta, and on third down, just look for 81 hole of hand, the former Charger. Wouldn't you just take two or three guys and wait over there for hole hand on third down? <laughs> just line up everybody wherever he goes. He's going to get the ball anyway. Pushing up the field, he's well covered. But he's big and strong. Look at the hand fighting. And he's just in position to make the play. Uh, Plummer's smaller, a good athlete, but not physically up to dealing with him. Oh, man. That was a terrific trade for the Rams. They gave up a fourth round pick last year to get him. So on first down, play action and wide open. Buford McGee, another ex charger, and he's bounced out of bounds at the 40 yard line, a gain of about five. Eugene Daniel made the tackle. Buford oh. McGee, he doesn't get the ball very often. No, that's one of the rare times. I think he had it one play last week for two yards. But his value naturally is as a blocker and willing to sacrifice, willing to sacrifice for Bell. Was Rathman a, as good a blocker as he seemed to be for the 49ers? Well, I'm biased, but I think he's the best blocker in, in the league, along with John Will Williams from uh, Seattle. when that flag comes in that late it's against Holy the tight God. end number 86 on the offense still second down and it was Damone Johnson the tight end well that was the first reasonably well executed run for the Rams you know John Robinson uh, spoke with us concerned about the team becoming too much of a passing team not tough enough physically when it comes to playing defense or short yardage and goal line style of football too much passing that really worried him and for today, they're passing well, but to be honest with you, not running well. 
instead of a first down in Colts territory, they're now second and 15 back at their own 30. Everett has a man. Everett! What a catch at the 40 boom yard line! as if you were drawing it on that telestrator. Just a bullet right to Eller. And he caught the ball in traffic. Well, we watched before the game throwing this pass. This is the Dan Fouts seam post. Dan was famous for it. Zampezi has taught it with, with Everett and his strong arm. And, of course, Eller can catch the ball in traffic. He's one of the great receivers in the game. Look at those yards already. 84 yards for the man who ate up more yards catching the ball than any receiver in the NFL last year. Bell dancing and finally finds a hole. Gains about three, maybe four, to the 41 with Odom among the tacklers for Indianapolis. Well, you've got Slayton and Slater playing, playing right guard and right tackle. Big, powerful, experienced football players. Blocking well, pushing people along the line of scrimmage, but Bell is getting to that line and stopping in the hole. He's looking for something better when, in fact, he ought to just be lowering his shoulders, splitting people, getting yards. Second down and seven as we approach the two-minute timeout. Rams trying to tie it up. Everett dumps it out to Bell. Good catch. And gets to the 38-yard line, short of the first down by at least three. Chris Good was there first. And uh, there's the signal by the official, the two-minute timeout here in Anaheim, California. A good game going. The Colts of Indianapolis lead by seven, and the Rams threaten to tie. to stay with us at halftime. Bob Costas and Eric Dickerson's idol. Oren Ball, James Simpson will be with you. All the scores and highlights. And the Cinderella man from Cincinnati, Boomer Esiason and the Three Bears. <laughs> well, he's gone showbiz on this all the way from Cincinnati. Not much showbiz in Cincinnati, by the way. <laughs> well, you were there. I was there eight years. Now comparing the two running backs, and of course Bell had an 18-yarder taken back by the penalty, or he'd be within three yards of Dickerson here in the first half. Two minutes to go, 17 to 10, Indianapolis. As we approach halftime, this is third down and a long two for Everett. And Alston O'Brien gets him out of bounds, shy of the first down. Everett could not find an open man. Tried to run for the first down, comes up short. It's fourth down and two. Couldn't quite get it done. Good decision, but he was in against the Alston, a great athlete, big active man, and Everett couldn't deal with it that well. The Rams apparently are not going to punt. They lost a yard on that play, so it's fourth down and a short four, and a sack is uh, recorded for Alston. This is a gamble. Absolute gamble. Look for Holan again. He's the man in motion. Flag down. Eller, first down at the 28. Henry Ellard having a great first half. Now let's see if it counts. It's against Indianapolis. But Everett moved his feet on that one. He was in all kind of trouble before he spotted Eller. Offside against the Colts, the climb. First down. Well, we have Eller coming across the field, but the key to this was uh, Everett making people miss. Take a look. Here, here, he spots him and throws the ball. What a breakup. First down, the pass to Greg Bell, incomplete, and a flag down in the Colts secondary. You know, that pass by Everett must have reminded Colts fans of a great pass by Montana that beat Indianapolis last week when, in a uh, similar... Offside! With 97 on the defense, still first down. You were saying, Dick? <laughs> in a similar circumstance that... Uh, Joe Montana threw around a big pass. Rush was able to find a way to get a ball to Jerry Rice when the two Colts, Harvey Armstrong, picked off Chris Good. Uh, that was an amazing play. The Colts were decimated last week, and they really made up their mind to improve. They learned a lot, according to Ron Meyer, about themselves off that game last week. Everett going for six and a flag down. Flipper in. 
Anderson fell at the five. It's interference against Indianapolis. And Chris Good was on the coverage. I just caught the end of that one. an erroneous call in this case just taking a look at it we're going to get contact right down the field here but it looks just like a normal play no problem whatsoever good coverage Odom's looking the other way and it was and basically he was just doing his job there wasn't any foul at all that I can see they still haven't worked that part of football out as far as interpreting interpreting what pass interference is five yard penalty in the first down of the 17 and Everett now goes for six has the man for Chris Good, number 37 of the Colts. The Rams wanted to go after him, but, but this is a tough one. He's, he's catching in every way. Inside, outside. Lansford makes it a 17-17 game. We had a comeback pattern on the outside. Good's in pretty good position, but this throw on the line by Everett is a thing of beauty. This is that great arm. Uh, they finally have uh, sort of uh, put in play. Finally sort of uh, put that thing in play with uh, Everett taking advantage of that arm. And of course, in watching them practice, they just work and work on these deep out patterns. You see, we're in pretty good shape. Now he breaks out. Not bad coverage, but look at this throw right on the money. There again, the key to that pass being complete is the whole ch charger system that's been brought up here to the Rams with Zampezi, the ball in the air before Everett completed his pattern. There's no question about it. That's the Dan, the Dan Fout system. That's frustrating for a defense. They do everything pretty well, and they get scored on. That, that uh, pass interference play, though, or illegal contact was, uh, I guess the word's erroneous. All pro first half for Henry Ellard. Five catches, 112 yards, and two scores. That one for 17 yards. Earlier, he caught a 29-yard scoring pass from Everett. So, a offensive first half, 17 aside. It's been a day of a lot of scoring throughout the NFL, and still a minute and a half remaining in this first half. As Albert Bentley has to go off his hands, picked up by Verdan. Uh oh! Down at the six yard line. <laughs> Brett Veronese makes the tackle. Well, we knew that could happen at any time the way Verdan was running back those kickoffs. Now, he had to take a lateral and save the day, but you just can't play around back there with all those people after you. Now, this is mishandled, no question about it. Sun might have been in the eyes of Bentley now, and Hancock. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Gee. Now, this puts them in bad shape. The only thing that's going to save the Colts here is the Rams don't have timeouts to get the ball back. They had to spend two timeouts this half to talk over an offensive play, so it can only stop the clock once, and the Colts will spend one. They seem confused. We have a break here. Let's bring you up to date on the other late scores here at 17-17. Minnesota and Chicago are tied. San Diego leads by four. The Niners and the Bucks are tied. At half now, the Lions surprisingly in front of the Giants 7-3. And the Cardinals still lead at Seattle 13-7. Uh, real pleased with his effort last week against San Francisco. Dickerson felt that uh, they asked too much of Chandler in the passing game. 
Chandler's a young quarterback, and that's pretty evident. Uh, Dickerson's got a good pulse on his team. One thing Dickerson pointed out to us, he really believes in Chandler, Chandler's future, and consequently the, the, the Colts' future. Well, you can't relax here and take a chance either, because this could be just the situation that Dickerson would love to break off a truly long run. 1.22 left. Much there. Four yards out to the 10. Vince Newsom, the safety man, made the tackle. The key here is to hold on to the ball. One mistake, and the Rams are going to get up on him. Do you think the knock on Dickerson that he fumbled too much was a fair one? I mean, he did have his share. Well, early on, I think it was uh, reasonable to say that he fumbled too much, often near the goal line, because he, he, his early style was running upright or erect. Near the goal line, more people are going to get shots at you. So consequently, he would fumble. Uh, near the goal line, just enough on occasion to lose a ball game. And you'd remember those more than the ones out at midfield. 42 seconds as the clock ticks away, and Chandler's going to let the clock run out. No hurry to run the play. Oh, don't do that. Dickerson at the 10, the 20, the 25, and out of bounds at the 28. <laughs> An option play. <laughs> well, with just seconds left in the half, there's not a likelihood you can score no matter what you run. Now, the option worked well, but that ball was obviously we get an option down the line of scrimmage, a defender stopping, and the pitch out, and then that big run. But the, the uh, Colts still aren't in position to score. And there are 29 seconds left. That might have been a better call when you're in scoring position or there's a logical chance to get some points on the board. Plus that, that lateral on your own 10 yard line, any kind of error, and you're behind. In, in a second. Well, Dickerson, uh, his goal of 150 certainly in reach as he has 66 now, and Chandler goes long. Too long, intended for Andre Risen. Well, Chandler shows you he's got the length of arm. He can throw it three quarters of the length of the field. And Risen's speed was very evident that time. Well, they do. Uh, the Colts have much more speed at the receiver positions than since they moved to Indianapolis. Well, they've got more speed, as do the Rams. Both clubs have really helped themselves with quick, fast receivers. They've paid for them with high picks. What did Ryzen say? At six feet and 191, he is the biggest receiver of the wide men, other than Pruitt, who is the fifth man. But the four that play, Ryzen's the big guy. Point guard with the Michigan State basketball team last year after he finished his football duty. 23 seconds left in the half. Second down and 10. Dickerson on the draw, and the Rams knew that was coming. Brett Baronez and others in on the tackle. This is a dangerous time in the game for the Colts, to be honest with you. One bad play and one completion by the Rams, they get a field goal out of it. So the Colts have to be careful here. Just 16 seconds, all this area to cover. They shouldn't gamble, such as they did just a second ago with that option play. Reminder, next Sunday, NBC Sports, Buffalo and Houston, Seattle and New England, the early games after the 12.30 NFL Live. And then part of our doubleheader, some of you will see the Raiders in Denver, others the Chiefs go against the San Diego Chargers. Well, the passing games have uh, dominated this, this so far. We talked about... Uh, obviously, Eric Dickerson returning home, and he's had his yards today. We talked about Bell making his, but the passing games have dominated as, uh, as much as anything I've seen for some time for either club. Yeah, the big plays, including the 82-yarder, is Chandler and Clarence Verdan. Jim Everett has hit his favorite man, Henry Ellis, for a couple of scores. Green dumps it off. One-handed catch by Dickerson, who gets out of bounds. No, he does not. They mark it inbounds at the 35-yard line. He doesn't have the first down anyway. And, of course, had he gone out of bounds, that would have been a favor for the Rams, who now have to use their own last timeout to stop the clock with two seconds left. Well, we finally saw Kevin Green do something. Kevin Green putting pressure on Chandler Green, who was second in the league in sacks last year as he recorded 16 and a half and had three to open the season at Atlanta last week. Well, he hadn't, hadn't really shown up until that play. Uh, 
and Kevin Call just came off knee surgery for the Colts playing right tackle is pretty much handled green right up to this point green who already has his future beyond football figured out he is a captain in the US Army Reserves and wants to make the military his life after football uh, he's going to go to helicopter school as I understand it his brother is a helicopter pilot his dad was a colonel, Old colonel Vietnam retired. veteran came in to talk with us yesterday at the Rams game. It's always interesting when a player comes in to, to chat with the press and he comes in with his shirt in his hand and not over his uh, torso. I had the impression that he feels pretty good about his body. <laughs> Both you and I were a little bit <laughs> humiliated. A little bit. We buttoned our coats when he did it. <laughs> we didn't even have any on. <laughs> Here's the final play of the half. And on fourth down, with only two seconds left, Chandler gambles and goes up with the Hail Mary, and uh, that one's over near El Monte someplace. Nailed one of the photographers on the sidelines. So the first half comes to an end here in Anaheim. With some big, big plays, especially from the passing game of both teams. The Colts and Chandler, Everett and the Rams, 17-0. Welcome back to sunny Anaheim Stadium where the Colts and Rams playing it even and it's a cliche that the game was about as even as you can get and so it was time of possession moving the ball each team punted only once Eric Dickerson got 69 yards but he wasn't the story no the real story is Everett the real story is Chandler and their receivers this has to be Everett's best half in his entire career his entire playing career and as far as Chandler's concerned as a second year quarterback this kind of a game and a critical contest Super stats, but look at Everett, 15 of 18, 209 yards. Chandler's not bad. <laughs> 10 for 17, no interceptions for either of these young quarterbacks. Uh, both men were their future ahead in the NFL, and apparently uh, that star's out there to be plucked for both of them, Everett and Chandler. Well, Everett, as far as, uh, well, this is this will be Chandler. And you can see Verdon's run. Now he's got an all-pro, gray, a pro bowl player, but that speed, now that concentration, the ball's right up over the outside shoulder, just where you want to throw it, Dick. And that ball about 60 yards in the air, and Verdan with all speed and the ability to lean back and make the catch and get the 82-yard touchdown. Now it's Ellard's turn, one of two touchdowns for him. Good pass protection, but most importantly, Ellard is going to be driving up the field. The ball is thrown before he even breaks right on the money. Consequently, we've got a two great running backs, but the story so far is going to be Chandler as a young quarterback, moving his team with his fine receivers. More importantly, Everett having his best day ever. Rams will get the ball first to start this second half. And Dean Biasucci has it teed up for Indianapolis. This might be the kind of game that uh, you just hope you get the ball last before the time runs out so that you have a chance to win it. Neither defense is that impressive. Strategically, it has been interesting that the Colts have forced the Rams to do something they didn't want to do, to take away that Eagle defense by using the three and four wide receiver sets. And we'll get more into that as this second half progresses. Biasucci. Ron Brown inside the five. Like to get those speedsters to dance because that takes away all that lightning, and so it is out of play goes at the 23 yard line. Well, they've really corralled Ron Brown, they've kicked that ball right into that corner very accurately, covered it. Ron has had nowhere to go, and of course, he's always a guy that can break it all the way. He's really frustrated, he has to be. Well, that's really one of the new developments, isn't it? Uh, as the kicking game has become more refined, it's not just who can kick it farthest and straight down the field, it's the placement of those kickoffs. Yeah, the placement of the, especially on the sideline, because if it goes out of bound, the other team gets it on the 35, so it has to be very accurate. Henry Ellard sent out to the right. He's got two touchdowns already. Everett starts in the 17 all time and hands it off to Greg Bell and right into the midst of the center of that Colt line spearheaded by Danell Thompson, Harvey Armstrong, and John Hand, the front three. Harvey Armstrong, number 79 from SMU. He played for Ron Meyer in college. Well, Harvey had a terrible game against the 49ers, and I'm sure he was visited with about it. He came in more determined. And he's got Doug Smith on him today. Doug's a perennial Pro Bowl football player. That play, great for Armstrong.
comes out limping. Well, Eller is catching that ball with, in this case, Baylor all over him. Well, Baylor's in the lineup now to try to do something about it. Eller pushing up the field, but look at the timing, and look at the, how the ball carries right into his body. Now, if he'd had to reach on either side, Baylor would have made a play. <laughs> Eller comes out limping his sixth catch, 133 yards for Henry, who had five catches last week, nearly 100. Greg Bell twisting to the 44, but will be second and seven. Fred Young down low to make the hit. He's Bolahan uh, with a solid block. Well, Young is uh, has got to come through. Uh oh. Looks like an ankle. Oh, he wants to go just like that. Might have been kicked. Did you see all that grass stain right there on the instep? Well, he's up and moving. If he was kicked, he'll be okay. But if he twisted it, most likely got to sit it out. Second down and eight for the Rams. Just underway in the second half. The Colts offside is Harvey Armstrong invading the backfield of the Rams, and they felt he could have held up. I've always argued that that should be a 15-yard penalty, unne unnecessary roughness, because clearly he was offside, had a vulnerable guy with trying to get the ball, and then he hits him. And so often the officials will simply make it a five-yards infraction. Five yards against the Colts on the players' red cash and We're going to get a jump offside in the play. The, the ball has not been snapped. He's well offside. He knows he's there. Now, he, obviously, the play is over. That's the kind of thing that uh, could result in an injury. Well, that certainly uh, fits the term unnecessary roughness. <laughs> I guess. Second down. Well, if either one of these clubs, Dick, had, had, uh, at halftime decided to stop the pass, then that's when you'll see these runners starting to have a field day. Everett is back in the game. He's wide to the right. This is Flipper Anderson in motion behind Everett. Greg Bell into Colts territory at the 48-yard line. That'll be close to a first down, but I believe about a yard shy. It'll be third and one. John Hand from Alabama, top pick of the Colts in 1986, tripped him up. He strained his ankle a little bit coming off the field. Both Hand and Thompson are big, angular guys. Last week, they had real problems with the 49er offense. They were being cut down, were cut down uh, by the offensive tackles and by the tight ends. Uh, that could be their weakness because if these guys get tired, then the Ram tackles, who are outstanding players, Panky and Slater, could really do something. Third and one, the announcement was that 72 Robert Cox is in as an eligible receiver. Doesn't matter. Bell runs it to an easy first down at the 41 yard line. Well, what we had was just some excellent blocking by Slater and Slayton, number 78 right tackle, Slayton number 61 right guard. You're going to see some excellent blocking at this point of attack with a pitch, and then you're just going to wheel them off the line of scrimmage. Now, this is the kind of thing that at this point in the game, you see an excellent job of pulling people, just pushing uh, the defenders out of the way. This happened last week to Indianapolis. Beckett had to come from a long distance from the far side to get him from behind. 17, Everett goes to the air. Everett, another great catch. Oh, my. You'll notice that ball is catching Eller right in the chest, and it has a lot of uh, velocity and carry on it. So if you'll see Ellard straight up the field, they're playing against his own defense. That means Everett has to drill it right in there. Linebacker trying to get depth on the zone right on the money. That takes a little courage, too, for that little receiver. He knows he's going to get belted. Already 173 yards for Henry Ellard. And the Rams threaten to take the lead. First down at the 11. Bell. Three or four yards. His style's not pretty, but he managed to sort of struggle and stumble and wind his way between people to just eat up those yardage. Just uh, checking on Henry Ellard, his best ever 
game with the Rams in his seven seasons, 177 yards against the Lions two years ago. And it would appear that he's going to break that easily if he stays healthy. He's just a handful of yards away, and we're just uh, 9.45 left in the third quarter. Henry Eller caught 86 passes last year to break Tom Fears' 38-year-old Ram record. Play action. Where's Eller? Now this time to Buford McGee, and he's tackled at the six-yard line. Good play by Harvey Armstrong. The nose tackle trailing and getting on the heels of McGee, denying him the first down. That nose man really uh, showing lateral pursuit. Yeah, he's coming off the nose. And what they wanted to do was run that counter play again. They wanted a crossing right receiver. Then we're going to bounce and into the flat. Really pretty well protected and pretty well uh, defended by the Colts. He had people in position all the way across the field. That's a great job by Armstrong right down that line of scrimmage. Third down and five for the first down. Six for the touchdown. Ellard. to the inside and breaks back to the outside and pulls a slower man-to-man -man coverage uh, defender with him. This has got to be Everett's greatest day, and I'm sure it'll end up that way. And really not a bad defense. The Colts are, you know, a good defense. They have an excellent plan. Lansford's try for point. Henry Ellard has the hat trick, and the Rams have the lead. Ellard's best game as a Ram in touchdowns, the first time he scored three. Well, what you're going to see is Ellard down the line, then back out in an excellent throw. The defender can't quite stay with it. Starts in hard, plants, and right back out. In the meantime, Flipper Anderson, the other receiver, going into the end zone and taking that defender with him. Yeah, and he, and he sort of blocked out Baylor, who was trying to cover him. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. By Coors Light, pure brewed in the Rockies, the silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. And by road handler Treadlock Radios at Sears. Tough tires you can trust. Jim Everett and Henry Eller, the passing combination for the Rams, having a banner Sunday here in Anaheim. And the Rams lead 24-17. Down it comes to Clarence Verdan. And he's out to the 28-yard line. Let's go back to Eller to show you a wide variety of moves. Well, this was excellent. You see Anderson up the field. Eller starting in and right back out. So you'll see him start in there, bend out. Oh, now then right away, Daniel is caught up trying to get past Anderson. Uh, in a sense, it's a pick play, but it's actually legal. All you're doing is screening a man out. Uh, Henry Eller, 10 touchdown catches last year, and for the first time in his career, he has three in a game. On his way to something really special already. That'll get bold print in the papers tomorrow. This sort of puts the heat on Dickerson because uh, now you find the Colts having to play catch up and running the ball. Not likely. Bentley out on the wing comes in motion. Chandler to Pat Beach is tight end and a first down out at the 39 yard line. Mel Owens on the coverage. <laughs> We asked Chris Chandler yesterday about his influences of growing up in the Seattle area. And he, of course, he said, I was there the first day Seahawks played. I followed them. But he said it, it wasn't uh, Jim Zorn so much or Steve Larkin. It was my older brother, a family of 10. He has a brother about 10 years older than he. He was a baseball player, Greg. And he said, told him about concentration. He said, from my early days, I was trying to focus in, to visualize, to concentrate. But I think I learned that quicker than most uh, young boys one of the outstanding athletes. Here at 23, quarterback in the Colts, it's Dickerson with that straight arm outside, 50, and finally runs out of bounds at the Ram 43. John Robinson, 
reminded us before the game that Dickerson sooner or later breaks something. Now that might have been it right there. Just one more step and he'd have had his touchdown. But sooner or later, he'll lull you a little bit and then make the big play. 17 this yards case on this one. Just a matter of speed. He comes outside. Everybody's sort of hooked in. Now it's a full foot race. Again, tackle him low, tough. He just raises his knees, reaches out. Anthony Newman, 26, got the taste of that Dickerson straight arm. Boy, the players don't like that, do they? They, they don't like the play. straight arm. If you're tall and you reach down straight arm, you and I would have to reach up straight arm. <laughs> I couldn't think it would work. If you're tall and strong and fast, that straight arm is a weapon. Chandler, the quickie. And it's Bill Brooks who gets to the Ram 31-yard line as both teams of this passing game moving at will. Another Colts first down. Well, that's what happens when you spend the entire week stopping somebody's running game. Practice it, emphasize it, talk it. Finals from earlier. The winners, Cleveland, Kansas City, Philadelphia. Boy, that's two very tough losses to absorb for the Redskins. Cincinnati, Big Pittsburgh. Boy, they have kicked around. Miami and Green Bay in a one-pointer over New Orleans. Can you believe that scoring? What happened to defense in the NFL? And here the same, 24-17, and the Colts driving to try to tie it. First down, Dickerson. Gets to the 28-yard line, a game of three, so he's over the 90-yard mark. Late scores, Bears by three, Houston by six at halftime. Tampa Bay has tied San Francisco in a battle of field goals. Detroit still making it tough on the Giants in the third, leading 14 to 10. And Phoenix has opened a 27 lead at Seattle. The NFC teams early really pounding on the AFC. Now here we go again with Chandler. He's got four wide receivers. Three to the left on second down and six. Brooks is the solo receiver to the right side. Going deep and a man is rising incomplete Anthony Newman on the coverage this this football dick reminds me of the old AFL in the, I guess it was the 60s just the ball is going up all over the place with a good chance of success we're up the field now that ball is within inches of another touchdown and Chandler within inches uh, of seeing an interference call against Newman could very well have been look at how tight this is really very, very questionable. Very close, anyway, for an interference call. But the defenders are desperate in this game. Good cornerbacks. They're just being taken apart down the field. They're down in six. What's he going to call here? Well, we might get a Dickerson trap. And Chandler takes the delay of game. Doesn't waste the time out. third down and 11. Well, you know, in a way, and we talked about this earlier, it seems to make more sense for quarterbacks to take the five-yard penalty than to waste one of those precious timeouts. I, I felt, Bill, that the five-yard penalty doesn't equate with a full timeout when you're trying to win a game. Well, there's times when it wouldn't. Uh, we saw this in this last uh, half. If the Rams had had one more timeout, they might have gotten the ball back a little easier. But you've got a young quarterback who doesn't want to make any mistakes. A lot of younger players. Rams looking for a pass, and Chandler accommodates. Almost intercepted. Went through a couple of Ram defenders' hands. Fred Strickland was one of them. Well, forced into his own defense. You see Chandler come back. He's getting good protection. Only three pass rushers. So you'll see him with a lot of room right here to throw the ball. Now look at the traffic when the ball comes down right here. Strickland and then uh, Daryl Henley was the man on the rebound who thought he had his first pro interception. Again, inexperience on Chandler's part, but all in all, pretty good game. Too far for a Viasucci field goal, apparently. Although the Colts have been known to run the fake field goal down in this territory, the line of scrimmage to 33 yard line. And uh, another delay of game. Well, it's evident they'll take that five yards and try to get a better angle to kick the ball to the goal line or out of bounds. Rams are saying, let's decline the penalty. Kevin Green said, no. They looked at the John Robinson. He said, no, let's make sure they punt it. 
So out comes to the 38. Daryl Henley, number 20, drifts back along with Clifford Hicks. And Stark now will just try to place the ball, push it inside the 10. Well, the Colts need field position because the Rams have been taking them apart, taking them apart with their passing game. So if they can bottle up the Rams, maybe force them to run, they can be a lot better off. Give the Rams any room now the way they're throwing the ball, they're going to score. Kick very high, and it bounces away through the end zone for the touchback. So that amounts to an 18-yard run on net yardage. The Rams will get it at the 20 when we come back. Look at young Chris Chandler. Boy, he's got the shoulders and the physique of a linebacker. He's about a 220-pounder. Disappointed that the Colts didn't get anything out of that drive that ended at the Ram 33. And then the penalty, the Rams down the touchback at the 20. Everett looking for a Ram tying record. Gets it. That's his 13th consecutive completion. Short yardage at that. Out to the 25-26 yard line where John Baylor wraps up Ellard. Boy, what a combination. Everett to Ellard, uh, that's going to be uh, something that's going to bring nightmares to Colts fans this week. It's a hot item. John Robinson, this could be John's best day as a coach with his passing game. So this is how it's matured. Now tying the record set by Pat Hayden. Whatever happened to him, the former Ram quarterback? I think he's a television star, isn't he? A lawyer. Here's Bell. And behind the good driving right side of an offensive line very close to first down Hayden one of many quarterbacks for the Rams in the 80s look at them Ferragamo Hayden Lee Rutledge Kemp Pastorini <laughs> the roll call goes on Brock Bartkowski Everett Millen Quarles and Herman and Jim Everett apparently is the man who's going to make the 90s a much more simple list they're going to clean up that list it could be that you'll see one name for the 90s the way he's playing today, the way he's matured, the way they brought him along. Ben Robinson sees the yardsticks move to first down on the Bell Drive at the 30. This one is a new Ram record, although it actually will lose yardage back to the 29. Greg Bell hit by John Baylor. That's 14 straight passes completed by Everett to erase the name of Pat Hayden from the Ram record book. Well, I think John Robinson's going to have to get used to a, a pass-oriented team with this great talent and Everett and his development, the pass protection of that offensive line. Just fair running backs, to be honest with you. Bell, just fair to good. And he's going to have to develop a way to keep his team tough and throw the ball like this. It can be done. I've seen it occur. Uh, we did it at San Francisco. successful mentor both in college and NFL. Bell! Oh, he almost skipped out into the clear out to the 32-yard line where Mike Pryor, number 39, makes the tackle. You know, John Robinson sitting and visiting with him, being reminded of, of this man's intellect, his intelligence, his wisdom, his instincts as an executive, as a management person, and as a person that handles people, you'd wonder in a, in a sense why a person like John would not have been interviewed or at least considered initially for a commissioner's job such as in the NFL. I think he offers everything. He may not have business experience, but his wisdom, his instincts, his intellect, and his feel for the game of football. He's a very unique man. Third down and up on top. He goes to Anderson. Oh. And so the streak comes to an end with Flipper Anderson. A touchdown in his grasp as he had beaten John Baylor. Well, John Baylor... <laughs> He's had a tough day. Chris Goods had a tough day. That's too bad on that. That was beautifully thrown. Anderson just took his eye off it just at the last second, probably looking to run with it quickly after the catch. At the nickname Flipper, Willie Anderson did uh, because uh, his grandma thought that uh, as a baby, the way he flopped around, it reminded him of then a popular TV series, a golfing series. Catcher's kick and a fair catch and a fumble. And it's recovered by Verdan. He falls on it at the 31-yard line. Now, Jim Everett, the uh, quarterbacks react in different ways when a sure thing is missed. And Everett just kind of smiles as if to say, well, we'll get another chance. But boy, oh boy, did that taste like six. That was it. 
Rams were guilty of an ineligible man downfield. So the Colts are going to make them kick again. Hatcher will deliver from around his own 17. The Colts, remember, for blocked a 49er kick for a touchdown late in their game last week. Chris Good. Hatcher sends a short high kick for Dan. Let's it bounce, and it'll take a Ram bounce for a moment and then down at the 37-yard line. So instead of the 31, the Colts get it at the 37. A reminder tonight on NBC, the magical world of Disney presents part two of The Parent Trap. Then a final farewell to a great NBC show, Family Ties, followed by the NBC Sunday night movie, The Bionic Showdown. The Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman. Tonight, only on NBC. Oh, you'll be home in San Francisco just in time to be able to catch that great Well, we're lineup. looking at uh, two Bionic quarterbacks here. Henry Albert getting a little extra taping. With eight catches and three touchdowns in this game, and the Rams leading 24-17, 3.39 left in the third quarter. <laughs> Bentley in motion, fake to Dickerson. Chandler doing a good job of getting away from pressure and then throws incomplete to his tight end, Pat Beach. Brett Strickland there. Doug Reed applied the pressure from Anaheim. Let's go to Bob Costas in New York. All right, Dick, well, we have a chance. A quick check on the American League pennant races. Toronto beat Cleveland in 10 at the Sky Dome, 2-1. to one. Meanwhile, Kansas City on Brett Saberhagen's 20th win. Wins at Baltimore, 7 to nothing. California beats the White Sox, 6-3. to three. And Boston completes a three-game sweep of the A's over the weekend at Fenway, 7-6. to six. The race in the West tightens up as the Royals and Angels each trail by only 2.5. It's the same margin in the East, but it's a two-team race. Toronto by 2.5 over Baltimore. We'll check the National League when we get a chance. Anaheim. And Rams in another scoring test that's been a pattern today in the NFL. Chandler underneath. Good reception by Bill Brooks. Can't quite wiggle away out at the 45 yard line. He's shy of a first down. That'll bring up third down just to complete some business on the consecutive passes completed in a row. And Bill Walsh will test your NFL knowledge on that. When Jim Everett completed 14, that was a new Ram record. But the NFL record for most consecutive passes complete is 22. You know the quarterback. I think it has to be Ken Anderson, doesn't it? How about Joe Montana? Oh, is it Joe Montana? That's right. <laughs> yeah, he did it against, he finished it up with Green Bay. Is that something? Well, when I was with Kenny, he completed 17 straight for a league record. 22 is Joe Montana. I'll show you how I'm slipping. <laughs> it happens once you get in the booth, believe me. Here goes Dickerson, head down and pulling his way into Ram territory. And a first down for Dickerson. Let's check that uh, Dickerson meter. Remember at the start we said that he thought a good game would be 150 yards. The Rams said back in his days when he was with the Rams against the Ram defense, you'd be lucky to get 60. And Dickerson said, hey, I'd get 200 against you guys. Now thus far today, Working toward his goal of 150, what that he considers a good game. Any back who gets 100 yards would consider that an outstanding game. He throws those away. He's still got a chance at a 150-yard goal because people begin to tire, and he doesn't. He's got great stamina. Draw play, Dickerson. Shooting to the 40-yard line gets eight, maybe nine yards more, and that puts him over the 100-yard mark today. Well, before the game, Dick, if you remember, I said seven, 27 carries, 170 yards. I bet it'll be close. What did you say? Nine carries, 40 yards, didn't you? <laughs> well, what do you have to pick on me for? I just wanted to take the low end of the pool, that's all. Well, most of the teams around the league have tasted the 100-yard rushing game. Um, number 29, Eric Dickerson. Now he's done it against his former teammates. Chandler. Going long for Verdan, and too long. The coverage by Daryl Henley, and a flag goes down as Verdan didn't like the way he was pushed around by Henley and Gray. Chandler was really hit on that last play. You can see he's struggling a little bit right now, just as he threw the ball. Red Cashin gets the information from the officials downfield. Personal foul against the Rams is the call. And that'll move.
the Colts closer to the Ram goal line. Plays over. Oh, oh. yeah. Second quarter, first play of the second period, and uh, that, of course, they say that defensive backs, one of the requirements, Bill Walsh, is that you must have a short memory. You have to forget the times you're burned, but I have a feeling that uh, Gray had remembered. It's just like NBA basketball. Somebody scores over the top of you. Don't think about it as I score again. So the first down on the penalty to the Ram 25. The Colts trail 24 17. One minute plus remaining in the third quarter. Three wide receivers to the left. Underneath, one of the open men. Fumble! Weathers fumbles, and the Rams' Michael Stewart has it. He fumbles. And the Rams recover at the 21-yard line. Vince Newsom winds up with the ball. after the catch trying to get a little extra and it cost him. I believe it was Kevin Green who forced the fumble. Chandler again, good protection. Well thrown. Trying to get that extra yardage. It was Mike Welcher. Now, this isn't very good right here. We're trying another lateral. Well, the hot potato winds up in the paws of the Rams. Rams with the football at their 22-yard line. This has been a frustrating third quarter for the Indianapolis Colts. They've driven twice down inside the Ram 30-yard line and unable to come up with any points on either occasion. Well, it's tough, especially with the Rams moving the ball the way they do. If the Colts can't get in the end zone, they know the Rams will. And off to Greg Bell and Dwayne Pickett trailing the play. It's on his back and drags him down shy of the 25. Pickett came from behind right down the line of scrimmage. He's uh, becoming one of the great players in the game. Those big linebackers outside uh, with Alston and Pickett really make an imposing combination for anybody to deal with because they can come off the corner, stop runs, go the other way, cut off runs that come toward them. Greg Bell now with 50 yards today to lead the Rams in rushing. Dickerson, in case you're just joining us, in his return to Southern California, first time against his former teammates, has over 100. Bell, close to a first down. Pick it again, really the play, along with John Hand, as we come down to the final seconds of this third period. Well, the Rams have to be pleased so far, just the fact that they've moved the ball through the air, hitting different receivers. John Robinson's team trying to start 2-0 in 1989. They lead by a touchdown after three periods. There's nothing like that exciting Ram mascot to uh, incite excitement in this lethargic Southern California audience. That really is a tough-looking mascot. What are, the, the, what are the Redskins have, the hog? That is not the hog image. <laughs> That's got to be a Southern California image. <laughs> Give me a big kiss. <laughs> It's been a long time for the Rams back in the early 50s since they celebrated an NFL championship. And they feel they're headed in the right direction with this man at the control, Jim Everett. Delpino and Bell in the backfield behind Everett. Underneath the Buford McGee. Lined up on a wing and he's hit at the 39-yard line by Cliff Odom. Let's uh, bring you up to date on the other late scores. Bears still leading by three at home. San Diego falls behind by 13. San Francisco. And the five field goals, three to two. Tampa Bay out kicking the 49ers. And the Giants have finally gotten the lead against the Lions at home. And Phoenix with a 27-14 lead of the Kingdom. Here it's 24-17 Rams as we start the fourth period. Second down two. Bell feeling his way, and boy, he gets hit. Fred Young filled the hole. No gain. O'Brien Olsen was there as well. Well, you and John Robinson, it's true of the coaching fraternity. You get two guys together and uh, you 
sooner or later traced back to some early day as an assistant. Well, many, many years ago, and let's not talk about how many, John and I were assistant coaches. He was at Oregon, and I was at the University of California, then Stanford. But many years later, both assistants in the NFL, John with the Raiders, me with the Bengals. I remember sitting on the stands with him before one of the games, wondering, both of us saying, why, why don't we ever get a chance to become a head coach? Neither one of us thought we'd ever make it. at the 48-yard line. It's a first down as Ellard closes in on a 200-yard Sunday. Well, they had a, uh, a good look at a, a scientifically designed play to basically help Ellard get open in the flat and pick Whoa. off the man covering him. So you'll see they're tied in, releasing up the field, pull a hand, and then Ellard breaking out. Pull a hand, picking up two defenders as it releases up the field. All of these things as Zampezi developed with the Chargers and Dan Fouts and Charlie Joyner and West Chandler, that great Charger pass offense. There's the high toss to Anderson. He's got it. No, knocked away at the last minute by John Baylor. Oh, Anderson, who dropped a short touchdown pass earlier in this second half, almost had that one. Well, you'd have to say thus far, just the initial impressions, the quickness of the Colt defenders is, is missing in a sense. You see there, Baylor overruns Anderson. Anderson, with his acrobatic abilities, almost makes the catch. So anytime they throw it up on the outside, uh, the Rams have got a chance to make a big play. A rare pass that lands on the ground from Jim Everett, who has missed only five times today. 23 for 28, 290 yards, three touchdowns for Everett, all to Ellard. Play action, and Everett runs right in to Greg Bell, and he's covered immediately by John Hand. Well, both Hand and Thompson uh, playing the defensive ends have been much more effective this week than they were last week. When we looked at those tapes prior to this game, I was really concerned for the Colts. Their defensive ends didn't look active enough. But in this game, if you saw Hand that time, he took away half the, half the field as he came up, up across the line of scrimmage. That's twice today that Everett is tripped on his own accord while drifting back. So that brings up third down and long, 18 to go for a first down. And that defense of the Colts says, where's Henry Ellard? He's out to the left. And that's where he is. Another Ellard catch and a first down at the 36. He's over 200 yards. not sure what I would say. Ellard just comes up the field and breaks to the inside. We get a blitz inside, but uh, look at Ellard come right up underneath Daniel. And, and you have to give a lot of credit to Everett because he's sitting there watching those blitzers come right down the throat, and he's just drilling the ball in. Boy, with a capital E, Everett, and a capital E for Ellard, who is now at the 204-yard mark, 11 catches today. Three for touchdown. Reversed it. Ron Brown. And he gets to the 31-yard line. Solid hit from O'Brien Alston. He played a fine defensive game, Alston. A rangy defensive end linebacker type, number 97. Well, when you see Ron Brown in a game at this point, uh, you've got to figure if he comes in, the ball is going to go to him. Of course, with that speed, he wanted to run the reverse. Had a chance. We always felt that a reverse is worthwhile if you, if you can get five yards from it because it affects the defense. It forces them to concentrate on it. There's the official total on Eller, 209 yards. That's exactly 100 yards less than the all-time NFL records to phone page of Kansas City had 309 in San Diego four years ago. But who knows where they're going. The man, and it's Buford McGee fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by the Rams. Aaron Cox was the man on the spot for Los Angeles, falling on the loose ball. Again, they're going to fake a counter one way. McGee waits, hits his man, and then breaks into the flat. Look at McGee on the right of the screen. Everybody's full. El uh, Everett looking down the field, then outlet over to McGee. Now hold the ball at this point. Red Young forced the fumble, but Aaron Cox, the wide receiver for the Rams, fell on it. 
And it's another Ram first down at the Colt 24 yard line. Under 10 minutes to go in this fourth period. And the Rams have a seven point lead and hungry for more. Looking for the back Greg Bell in the flat. And he is uh, out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Well, Everett's decision making is very good. He wanted to go down the field that time to Anderson, breaking out. Anderson covered, he threw it right out to Bell. Now, it's not a lot of yardage, but it forces the defense to account for people all over the field. Only a yard on that play. Second down and nine for Everett, whose career dates back to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he grew up. His father, a professor at the university there, and his idol, former producer Lenny Dawson. You know, there was really some intimidation that went on when, when Eric Dickerson uh, was with the Rams and, and uh, Everett joined them. Uh, Everett felt intimidated, no question about it. Del Pino breaking tackles and steps out of bounds at about the eight yard line as the flag goes down. Two flags are down. You know, when Everett joined the Rams, uh, Dickerson, of course, was the star, the great player. That's against the Colts for face mask, and so the Rams will be down inside the five-yard line. Face mask, number 31, during the run, five yards, he's tacked on, first down. Michael Ball, the rude dude, self-named. Look at this break to the outside. Good straight arm, good straight arm. It, it appeared that the call was going to be face mask. And it was, although it was a very brief uh, encounter. It could have been either way. It looked like the, the straight arm was a face mask, too. Half the distance takes it inside the four-yard line. The Rams in close to get another seven points and lead 24-17. And Eller to the left. Look for Houlihan in motion. Del Pino wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by Donnell Thompson. Now North Carolina star. Pete Olihan, who is the short yardage expert for John Robinson. There he is, and he isn't going to catch it because he's coming to the sideline. But getting back to Everett, uh, he was really intimidated with Dickerson. And he's, he really didn't flower or develop until Dickerson left. I don't know what would have happened had they both remained on the same team. There's only room for one star. John Robinson was always concerned that Dickerson had far too much impact on his football team. His presence just dominated everything. Everett with pressure from Bickett. Intercepted. Michael Ball, and that might have been a long touchdown. But Damone Johnson, the tight end, was able to make the tackle in the open field with Ball looking at a lot of California real estate straight ahead. So the interception denies the Rams a chance to take a more than touchdown lead. And the Colts have it at their own nine-yard line. Michael Ball's first interception of the year. Now that's a play pass the Rams have run each year. You always watch out for it. The tight end blocks in and releases across the field. The back's faking in. We fake, come back, hold it, and hit the man over there, but the coverage was right up underneath it. So I think Everett got a little bit relaxed, a little bit easy going there. There's that throw. Come right underneath it on the, on the coverage. And Johnson would have been open had the pass been longer, but Bickett applying pressure on Everett took him down as he threw the ball. Dickerson gets maybe a half yard. Doug Reed has played a solid game inside the defensive tackle for the Rams. You know, Dick, those are the tough situations because had the Rams failed to score, kicked a field goal, that might have been too much really for the Colts to come back again. But instead, they failed, and the Colts now naturally are one touchdown back with a Dickerson in their lineup and with those fast receivers. That drive by the Rams consumed nearly eight minutes, seven minutes and 52 seconds to get nothing. Dickerson now with 105 yards in the game. We're at the midpoint of the final period. Chandler to Clarence Weathers out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Clarence Weathers with a catch. It's not a first down. And first, we go to Bob Costas. 
Okay, Dick, here's a quick check on the National League East. Doug Drabeck and the Pirates shut the Cubs out 2 to nothing, but the Cubs got help elsewhere. Langston outdueled Darling. Montreal won and the Mets nothing. And in 12 innings at Philadelphia, John Crock with a grand slam homer. The Phillies beat the Cards 9-5 in the first of two. And so Chicago's lead over both the Mets and St. Louis is 5.5, pending the outcome of the second game of the Philly Cardinal doubleheader. Dick? Welcome back to Anaheim. On a high-scoring day, are looking to get another touchdown and tie the Rams who lead 24-17. This is a third down and six. Dickerson, first down at the 21, maybe the 22. Dickerson knew he was just at the yardsticks and you saw him lurch forward just in case he had misjudged first down yardage. You know, he's overstated things. He's uh, talked probably a little too much here and there. He's ridiculed people, but one thing you have to say about this man, he's a great performer. Well, there on his gauge, a good game, 150. He has 105 yards rushing, another 29 pass receiving today. Can you imagine being so good that 150 is just a good game? Dickerson. It was a hole, but it filled in a hurry. Thanks to a fine play by Brett Ferenez, number 51, Michael Stewart coming up from the safety spot to help out. Well, with this offensive formation, you have four wide receivers. Dickerson back there with just five linemen to block for him. You can't run some of the very basic things he's made his yards with over the year. Uh, he's always used that guard, tackle, pull, counter play. You can't run it with just that one back and four wide receivers. Three wide receivers to the left. Brooks split to the right. Less than six minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Chandler to Brooks and the timing off on that pattern. Daryl Henley was over there for the Rams. Well, if there's a critical play in the game, this is it for the Colts. Or from the crowd. John Ramsey, the public address announcer, giving them the story that Tampa Bay still leading San Francisco 9 to 6 in the fourth quarter. Critical play right here. Five minutes to go, a little over almost six minutes. Bad field position, have to get a first down. If they punt, the Rams will be sitting at midfield with a ball in the lead. No shotgun, third down and eight. the punt. Literally no gain on that play. Well, this is where Greg Bell now comes into play. The Rams have a seven-point lead. They're going to get good field position. They want to run the ball and use the clock. Start the punt Both Zero teams in the second eight. half have all three timeouts remaining. There's Bell. He wasn't that popular in Buffalo. He was a good player, obviously. Well, the word out of Buffalo was when the trade was made and they got Bennett, they said, you have to take Bell on the deal. That's what I understand. He seems like a pretty good guy. He maybe talks a little too much, but on the other hand, he runs pretty good, too. Starks punt. Rolling down to the 30-yard line. And so the Rams start from there. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Greg Bell played at Notre Dame on a team with Dave Dewerson and Tom Thayer, now with the Bears. Bob Crable, a fine linebacker, formerly with the Jets, the late Stacey Turan, and, and others with the Irish. Great high school uh, long jumper, 24 feet, 6 inches, but not in the game right now. Newford McGee is the lone setback, and Everett is going to throw. That's why they put me up in the booth. <laughs> I think Ed DeBartolo figured it out. It was time to go. That's 12 catches for Ellard and 230 yards. What a day. Well executed play. Oh, he's There's just been no wide open. coverage close to him. The one point you might 
one conclusion you might reach with the Colts is their the quickness in their secondary because they've been just either off people or unable to react quickly enough to what's happening. A career game for Henry Eller. Now it's Bell. Twisted down at the 44-yard line. Gain of almost five. Well, they can lock it up with just running Bell at this point. Uh, Ron Meyer has had his problems early in the seasons. His September record, counting this year, losing last week, one and six, a winner going down the stretch. In fact, remember last year, after a dismal one and five start, the Colts came back and were eight and two to finish up. But that wasn't quite good enough to get him in the playoffs. And part of that is the fact that the old schedule maker has not exactly been kind to Meyer and the Colts. We'll get into that after this play. Whoops. Colts were offside. The free play and Bell. Now, the defense is hardly a free play for him. He got nailed. Well, it's and the toughest schedule in football, right, Dick? Well, there it is. The team, based on the records of the teams you're going to play the previous year, the Colts opponents winning record 55%. Buffalo, the second toughest, then Pittsburgh, New England, and then the first NFC team, the Rams, the fifth toughest opponent list. So he says, here I am. I start with San Francisco at home, the Super Bowl champs. Then I have to play the Rams. Because I don't want to make too many excuses. But it has been tough. Well, he's explained it, but there really isn't much that can be done, obviously. I don't know what, what the re relationship is between that win-loss record starting and otherwise, other than in the past, possibly the Colts have been very conservative and not opened up till later in the year offensively. Quintus McDonald, a rookie six-round pick from Penn State. Second and inches. And Del Pino has the first down. Just outside the cold 35, and the clock ticks away. 349, 348 for the Rams. We'll try to eat as much of that time as they can and hope they can at least get a field goal out of this penetration. They're in field goal range now, a long field goal. It'll be about 52 yards should they be in a position to have to kick one at this spot. Well, a winning combination often is great passing early, great running late. And in this case, the Rams run the ball, use the clock, make first downs. That means the running game's effective. That's when you can really take full advantage of a running game right now. The all-time record, as you think about Eller and all his catches today, 12, is 18 in the game, set by a Ram. So close to getting another one. And again, uh, in that situation, a bit surprising the call. John Robinson rolling the dice. I don't know uh, about the call, to be honest with you. I'm not necessarily critical, but there's 40 seconds of time right there that could have been used by running the ball. 40 seconds on that clock. So an incomplete pass not only is the is a failure of a play, but it's 40 seconds of time. Maybe longer if you handle a clock right couple of running plays and we're running out of time already. That stops the clock with 3.08 left and is a favor to the Colts, second and ten. Bell. Nice open field tackle from Mike Pryor, number 39, former Illinois State football and baseball star. He really had a choice of going one of two ways, uh, Major League Baseball or football. He was an all-time uh, hitter with Illinois State, a lifetime batting average of 388. He was drafted by the Dodgers, the Orioles, and the Astros, but he always wanted to be a football player. He had 23 interceptions in college, and so his wishes come true with the Colts. Timeout called by the Colts. Their first timeout, it comes with 249 remaining in Anaheim. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by new Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Big play, third and seven. It goes to Anderson. He catches it at the three-yard line. Almost true to his nickname, Willie Anderson.
Jackson had to flip himself in midair to catch that one. Interesting call, just a go pattern up the field. Pretty decent coverage. But Baylor is just sort of outgunned. He's giving it all he thing he's always got there, but all he can do is sort of play the receiver. So it, in a sense, it's, it's a superior athlete uh, in Anderson going for a ball because otherwise uh, everything was right. Full blitz by the Colts, uh, pretty decent, just a throw and a catch. That gives the Rams a spot at back of the five-yard line, first and goal as we're down to the two-minute timeout. So the Rams with a 24-17 lead are first and goal sitting on the Colts five-yard line as they go for a 2-0 start in 89. Ron Meyer, not uh, much that you can look for here. Down by seven, the other team on your five-yard line, first and goal. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. The game is the property of the National Football League, Indianapolis Colts, and Los Angeles Rams, all rights reserved. A record day for Jim Everett as well. 28 completions. That's three more than his best as a young Ram quarterback. And he's just a handful of yards away from his best yard each day with 368 yards. Thanks to those, there's the numbers on Everett. Only the one interception down deep in Colts territory, marring an almost perfect day. Thanks to Steve Bazika, Jason Stein, Bob McDonald, Mike McGrath. It's really interesting how a game progresses. We started into this thing with uh, Dickerson, the main main source of interest, uh, main source of excitement. Seeing if Bell can stay with him. It's the, it's the quarterbacks. Colts have called a timeout. 137 to go, and the Rams just two yards away. Second and goal for the Rams, leading 24 to 17. Less than two minutes to go. And Colts have only one timeout left. During the commercial breakaway, you can hear the fans chanting Eric, Eric, and taunting Dickerson. And Greg Bell, the man who replaced Dickerson, touchdown Rams. The same. It appears to be a team that uh, certainly has some offensive weaponry. It's a matter of will their defense be able to do the job. Well, this is the most versatile Ram team I've seen and has more dimension to it offensively. Defensively without the great star, the great player, but a lot more speed than they've had in the past. Lansford's try for point. And with a chance, Eric Eric. Dickerson's 100-yard day is not the factor. Bell answers with nearly 70 yards of his own and a touchdown, and that completes a 69-yard drive in eight plays. The line of scrimmage dominated by the Rams. Of course, it's right at the end of the game. The Colts aren't going to be just whether they mean to or not as intense when they get scored on. And the Colts aren't that bad either. They've still got a good chance. It's 0-2. It, it can be frustrating that they can have one of the better teams in the conference and certainly in their division. Fine young quarterback, quick receivers. Little trouble in the secondary, at least today. Dickerson will get one more chance to be in this game. Uh, the Colts, uh, the optimists back in the Midwest would have to think, well, a quick score, an onside kick, and we still aren't out of it. Don't count us out yet. It's not 10 count quite yet. Let's compare the two uh, runners. Dickerson 107 to Bell 68. So 39 yard difference. Each with a touchdown. That's 39 yards of maybe a million dollars and six other players uh, think they trade. The Rams will trade that difference between Bell and Dickerson. All for 39 yards. 
There's still a puzzle missing out of that trade, Dick. There's still a puzzle missing. I just can't believe that Dickerson would take that position not knowing he could, he could go to the Colts or somewhere specifically for a certain amount of money. This is Verdan. One block away from really taking that one all the way to the 43-yard line. Finally tackled by Daryl Henley, the rookie from UCLA. Now out comes Chris Chandler after the 22-yard return by Verdan. And the Rams, of course, will really go into a deep defensive drop. And the crowd now, another salute to Dickerson. There's the total yards when you mix in the receiving with the rushes. You know, they're... You know, that chan is there, but I'm not sure that he's sort of a fascination. There's a lot of respect for this guy. It's sort of in fun, in a sense. Yeah, in fact, he was even smiling on the sidelines a moment ago. Screen to Dickerson. And he's to the Ram 45, and about 15 more on his total. No huddle. First down. Clock runs, 108, 107. The Colts have just one timeout left. They're hailing themselves well. One minute to go. Chandler, Brooks. Wiltshire makes the initial hit along with Clifford Hicks. Another first down to the 33, but the clock continues to consume those precious final seconds on Ron Meyer's goal. 11 more on that play. Do you think Dickerson's lost anything at this point in his career? No. no. Not other than the fact that uh, that old adage, uh, beware the man who gives you everything you want, and apparently uh, he uh, is just about at that stage. There is the final timeout spent by the Colts with 25 seconds to go. Stay tuned, especially those of you on the East Coast, following the conclusion of this game for our NBC Sunday night lineup, The Magical World of Disney, Fair and Trap 3, Part 2. 3 to 2, a close one. Family Ties, Sunday night movie, The Bionic Showdown, The $6 Million Man and The Bionic Woman. What a matchup. Tonight on NBC, here the matchup has featured Jim Everett and his passing game to Henry Ellard. The smile should be big for the Rams in that regard. The Colts, with just 25 seconds left, they're on the Rams' 24-yard line. No timeouts left. Eric Dickerson in the backfield, 116 yards rushing. The throw to Brooks, and Brooks is to the two-yard line. Denied the touchdown by James Washington and Jerry Gray. And... Chandler trying to hurry his team up there and at least try to get in the end zone. Clock. No way to stop it. The throw is intercepted. Jerry Gray. And the game is over. The Rams have defeated the Colts 31-17. You ask me if... I thought Dickerson had changed. How about you? He you... certainly is competitive. He certainly is tough. He's got the great instincts, but he's had to have lost a step or two. There's no question about it. But look at him. They're right around him. He's a lot more popular than you'd ever think. Well, I look think the players themselves ultimately are like all the rest of us. They're fans, and they, best of all, recognize a great player. Yeah, they're right in front of their own fans. But, you know, the, the people in the stands also, the fans, they teased him. But it wasn't a... They didn't try to malign him. Now the Rams start 2-0. The Colts 0-2. The Rams use the passing game today. Here in Anaheim, nearly 64,000. Saw the Rams win by 14. The Most Valuable Player Award sponsored by Budweiser. And today's MVP is Henry Ellard. A career game. 12 catches, 230 yards, and three touchdowns. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVP selected around the league today. Here are the other scores before we leave. The Bears apparently are going to go up 2-0 as Minnesota, a team favored by many, really tastes the bear bite at Soldier Field. Houston apparently is going to beat San Diego down south. San Francisco had gained the lead at 13-9, and the Bucks have come back to lead 16-13. The Rams could be in first place in the West, depending on that outcome. The Giants 
beat Detroit after struggling 24-14, and Phoenix still up by 10 at Seattle in the fourth. The other finals you saw earlier from games around the league were all big scores, basically. A day of high scoring. Your impression of this one? Well, I think two fine young teams. The Rams look poised to make a run at the Super Bowl. The Colts much improved, much more dimension. A great player in Dickerson. Good chance to win their division. Would you, if you had had the chance to make that trade for Dickerson, given all that had to be given to get him? He turned it around. He's turned that franchise around. All right, that's it from Anaheim. Be sure to be with us next Sunday. A great NFL doubleheader here on NBC. It all begins with NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern Time. Buffalo, Houston, Seattle, New England will be the first game for those of you watching. And the rest of you will see Raiders, Denver, Kansas City, San Diego in the second half of the doubleheader. Now stay tuned for the NBC Sunday night lineup. There it is. For Bill Walsh, Dick Hanberg, the final score again here in Anaheim. Rams 31, the Colts 17. The proceeding has been a presentation of NBC Sports.